everybody. Welcome to Saturday Stories. I am so delighted to present and introduce you to Dana Wolfakote. And she is here this morning from Queens in her art studio. And she's going to be talking about her very new book um, that's just launched this month, actually, Peanut Gets Fed Up. And I'll tell you a little bit more about her in just a moment because I want to welcome anybody who's participating for the first time and let you know that this series runs once a month on the third Saturday of every month. And we introduce you to fabulous award-winning illustrators and sometimes author illustrators like Dana. And you get to see books that are being made and how they were made and thought out and the ins inspiration behind them. We get to visit illustrators in their studios and you also get to draw along in a live workshop where our illustrator will draw for you and you can see how they do their illustration style and you get to practice that style as well, which is really fun. And this morning will be a very fun illustration workshop with Dana. So I also want to let everybody know that if you want to visit the Society of Illustrators and the museum, you can check out what exhibits are going on right now and do that on our website. And Lindsay behind the scenes will put our website link in the chat. Um, also, I want to remind you that this morning, have your art materials ready and also a favorite stuffed animal or toy that you might like to try drawing this morning because Dana is gonna give you lots of tips of how to bring um, an animal that is stuffed animal toy alive in a drawing, how to give them a character and a personality. So that's going to be really fun. Um, also, I want to remind you that if you would send in your drawings, we would love to see them. You can send them to my email address, which, i um, sorry, Lindsay will put in the chat, but you can also send them to Dana. If you already know and are a fan of Dana's books, um, do send them to her as well. We like to share um, illustrations with each other. Um, I also wanted to mention um, that um, you can put questions for Dana in the chat. I really love to ask questions on your behalf when the workshop starts. So she'll do a little presentation first and read her new book and, and then she'll start the live workshop. And during that time, I will share questions. So think of any questions, like particularly when you're listening to the presentation, you might have a question that pops into your mind. So just write that in the chat and then later I will um, say who uh, wrote that question and I will ask it on your behalf. Um, so without further ado, a really warm welcome to Dana this morning. Um, Dana was born in Korea, um, but she grew up in New Jersey. She now lives in Queens with her husband. And a very fun fact is she and her husband actually got married at the Society of Illustrators last year, which we were very thrilled about um, in our historic uh, dining room and terrace. And um, we also know Dana through her work um, because she's been doing picture books now uh, since 2018. And she's done already 10 books, which is a lot of books. Some she has written herself, like the first book she wrote and illustrated is called Rabbit and Possum, which is about two very unlikely friends. And I really love that book very much. And then she's also done um, collaborations with other authors, um, some of which I have here. Um, you can get these books in the library. Um, this one is The Remember Balloons, which was written by Jesse Oliveros and won an award. Also, she's done a book series, um, which is more middle grade reader. Celia Lee Jenkins and these two cute books also won awards and they're by Susan Tan, illustrated by Dana. Um, and Dana's gonna tell you much more about herself and her inspirations and how she got into drawing and having a love for drawing, which she's had all her life since a young child. Her mother even said she knew she was going to be an artist when she grew up and she was right. Um, Dana also very interestingly worked in animation and she'll tell you more about that. If you go to her website, which Lindsay will pop in the um, chat as well, you can see some of the reels of her animation. Um, she worked on animation shorts for the Unicorn Rescue series, which some of you might know about. And there's also a link in the chat to those series so you can check those out as well. Animation really helps with picture book illustration and writing because it's also about storytelling. And, you, and Dana will totally explain how that influenced her illustration and love of writing picture books as well. So um, I also want to thank, before we start, the Bruce J. Heim Foundation who continue to 
gift us with the generous sponsorship of this program, bringing it to you all for free. And welcome to you all, wherever you're coming in from. We'd love to hear where you're joining us from, whether it's from other parts of the States or even other countries. That's very exciting for us to know. And also this um, program will be on our YouTube channel for you to revisit and draw along again. So over to Dana, welcome this morning. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I'm so excited to be here with everyone today. And uh, so yeah, I, I'll just get right into my uh, presentation that I have for you and then we can have some fun drawing. Uh, can everyone see that? Yes, perfect. Okay, so um, as Claire said, I've been working on picture books now since about 2018. Um, my first book was called Rabbit and Possum, and I also, that was the first book I actually wrote as well. Uh, the next book, which uh, Claire also mentioned, is The Remember Blooms by Jesse Oliveros, and that won the uh, Schneider family honor. Uh, for, and that's an award for books about um, characters with disabilities or illnesses. Uh, and it's about a grandfather with Alzheimer's. So it's a really beautiful story. And it was a real privilege to get to illustrate that, especially because it was um, inspired by Jesse's own grandfather. And next, there was uh, One Snowy Morning by Kevin Sun. And um, this is a really fun uh, kind of classic winter picture book. And it's about a chipmunk and squirrel who um, come across a snowman in the woods. And instead of just seeing a snowman, they, they look at it and they see all these different possibilities for it. And then all of, uh, you can see all these different animal friends join in in the end. And it's got a great message about kind of being creative and, and seeing things from different perspectives. Uh, and then next there's Squish Squash Squished which is <laughs> kind of a tongue twister title. And it was written by Rebecca Kraft Rector. It's actually, I think her debut picture book. And um, this was also a fun one to work on because you can see there's, there's uh, kids and there's animals and um, a lot of kind of wacky stuff happening in that book. And then uh, next we have Tea Time by Beth Ferry and you may know uh, best other books. Uh, she's she's you know a, an amazing best-selling author, and I and I really jumped at the opportunity to work with her. And uh, Tea Time is a really fun story about a grandfather and granddaughter who uh, kind of have a little bit of misunderstanding when they say they're going to have tea time together. The grandfather thinks they're they're going to go golfing, while uh, Franny, the granddaughter, thinks that they're going to be drinking tea together. <laughs> um, <laughs> And then uh, we have Peanut Gets Fed Up, which actually just came out um, about, you know, maybe 10 days ago at this point. Uh, so it's brand new. And it is the second book that I've written. And uh, I'm going to go into all about how I made the book and what inspired the story. But it's basically about a stuffed penguin who uh, gets fed up with its owner after being dragged around and, and you know, and roughed up its, its whole life. Yeah. And uh, then we have the middle grade books that I've worked on. Um, there's The Trouble of Shooting Stars by Meg Canistra. Uh, and that's a really uh, another really beautiful story about a family that's kind of gone through a traumatic event. And there's these kind of magical children who, who help them kind of work through it. And then finally, uh, Claire also mentioned Silly Jenkins, which is a, a middle grade series about a, a half a Chinese half, half white girl, and she is an aspiring author. And it's, it's a really fun, it's really funny. And if you like uh, Ramon, the Ramona Quimby books, and I think, you know, it has a lot in common with those. Okay. Um, so like Claire said, I was born in a country called Korea and in the capital, which is Seoul. And I came to the US when I was only three months old and then I grew up in a town called Lakewood in New Jersey. And you can kind of see that Lakewood is kind of right in between New York and Philadelphia, um, which is great because, you know, we get to visit both places growing up and there's not a lot going on in, in Lakewood itself. Um, I was near 
you know, the, the Jersey Shore, which was nice. I actually worked there as a kid and, mm -hmm. you know, getting to go to, I wasn't at, like, it was funny because um, I wasn't that into the beaches when I was little, and, you know, the sand was like hot and mm -hmm. I didn't like the water, but now I'm, you know, older and I appreciate it more. Um, and I actually ended up going to school in Philly at uh, the University of Pennsylvania. And um, then from there, after I graduated, I ended up in New York City, which is where I still am now. And I've always kind of loved the idea of living in New York, um, you know, all the different people and cultures, and there's so much going on here all the time. Uh, so yeah, I've been here for about 15 years now. And that's, uh, so on the right there, that's a photo of me and my husband. And uh, my husband is also <laughs> my literary agent, Sean McCarthy. Uh, yeah, hi, Sean. <laughs> hi, rabbits. <laughs> and the rabbits. <laughs> and the rabbits. Uh, so yeah, I, I share an apartment with uh, my husband and my two, my two rabbits. And uh, on, so on the left there, that's Maggie oh. uh, with, her little, with her little gray nose and ears. Mm -hmm. And we got her about a year ago. And she's, she's actually a larger rabbit. She's like a, what they call a Californian or Himalayan mix. So she's, she's a larger uh, rabbit, about six or seven pounds. And then on the right, that's Peanut. And we named him Peanut because we actually only got him about, about a week and a half ago. So it was actually the same week that uh, my book came out. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thinking like, oh, what, you know, like we didn't really know what to name him, but then I thought, well, why not just call him Peanut? And he's, yeah, he's very tiny compared to Maggie and he kind of looks like a peanut. So we thought that was an appropriate name for him. Um, and these are uh, my two other rabbits that I, that I had and sadly wow. they're no longer with us, uh, but you can see on the right, they actually have, uh, I've managed to put them into a few of my books. So they yes, kind of move on my work. I love that. <laughs> and so Chewy is the black and white rabbit with the floppy ears and Woodstock is um, the tan rabbit with the crazy hair. And um, she has, she's called, her breed is called a, a lion head. So that's why she has that kind of, kind of mane. Um, so and you can see the uh, rabbit, the, that, that's the image on the top left there. She, she was, um, the look of rabbit was inspired by Chewy. I just, I just kind of took his his design and, and got rid of the spots around the eyes. Right. The long ears. Yeah. And then on the right, that's from the Remember Balloons. Um, on the bottom left, that's uh, Woodstock and Tea Time. And mm -hmm. um, and then on the right, that's uh, Woodstock and Chewy on a walk and, and squish squash squished. So <laughs> I'm I'm currently. Uh, I don't have Maggie or Peanut in any of my books yet, but I'm sure that they will find their way into. Oh, yes, I'm them. sure. <laughs> yeah. So cute. Uh, and so the reason why I ended up moving to New York was actually so I could work in animation. And uh, it's kind of what I had wanted to do since I was a kid. And, um, I, uh, you know, I had a, I went to school for, I did some, some work in animation in, in school. So my first job, my first few years in working in the industry, I was doing uh, TV work. So these are some of the shows that I've worked on and I would be surprised if anyone had, has seen or heard of these shows uh, because they, they only lasted, you know, a couple of years, but uh, I, I learned a lot working on them and I kind of got to work on all aspects of animation so that you know there's different stages you you have you know the character design and then storyboarding and then uh, you know finally actual animation making the characters move and I got to do a little bit of all that. Dancing Sushi is such an unusual character. <laughs> uh, yeah that that so that was a spin-off of Kappa Mikey which uh uh, okay. which is one on the left, which is where I started. Mm -hmm. not, not Dancing Sushi, I think, is just a web series. You might still be able to find, oh, cool. find that on YouTube or something. I'm not even sure. But that was, uh, that was a lot of fun to work on. I can see. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I still uh, actually do a lot of animated work today. I kind of split my time 
in between um, doing shorter freelance projects in animation and working on the books. Um, with TV, you're kind of, you have to kind of commit to, you know, working on a full season of television for, uh, you know, maybe like six to eight months at a time, depending on what your role is. So right now, over the, when I started to work in, um, in publishing, I kind of needed to transition to jobs that were shorter in length. So I'm doing more commercials and um, short videos for different companies. Uh, and you can see it's like a, you know, it's all different types of work, all different types of styles and uh, ways of working. So, you know, it kind of keeps me like. Yeah, very diverse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so one of those examples I think you mentioned in the introduction is uh, the Unicorn Rescue Society, which is uh, that image on the top left. And um, it is actually a book series, a middle grade book series by Adam Gidwitz. And he pairs up with other award-winning authors to sort of talk about, uh, or, or the stories about um, they rescue different mythological creatures around the world. So you can see that, um, you know, that little blue guy there is uh, Jersey and he's actually the, the Jersey devil, which is, you know, from, he's from New Jersey. Um, and that was a lot of fun to work on because I got to animate Jersey dancing and, and the characters doing some silly stuff. And that, you know, that doesn't always happen where I get to like animate children's book uh, material. Yeah, that was like a good one for you, right? And yeah. you did that prior to doing your picture books, so wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, and then, um, you know, some of the other stuff is like, you know, I, the, the one on next to it is a Dum Dums commercial. And then uh, on the bottom left there, there's uh, an NBA promo that we did a couple years ago for the new season. And um, I think it's, it's funny because um, all of us as like the animators that worked on it, we had no idea who any of these players were <laughs> that we were working on. Like we're not sports people, but then, so I, I learned a lot working on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and now I, I, I'm back to like not knowing anything about, about who anyone is. <laughs> um, and these are just some uh, animated gifts that I've made for fun over the years. And I, I had to include the happy Easter one for yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. And those are actually, you, you might recognize that's Chewy and Woodstock again. And um, so <laughs> it's Chewy kind of being very, you know, he's, he's always very food motivated. <laughs> and uh, Woodstock was a little bit grumpy, so. <laughs> I, I drew her looking not too happy. Um, and then uh, I also do uh, some animated gifts for the books that I work on whenever, you know, I haven't had time to do them recently, but you can see that's one for the Remember Balloons, one Snowy Morning, and then there's Rabbit and Possum on the bottom. And I actually um, did a whole trailer for Rabbit and Possum. So uh, I didn't want to put the video on here because you know I, I know videos don't really play well over Zoom, um, but I have some clips here. And then if you search Rabbit and Possum book trailer on YouTube, it should be the first thing that comes up. Yes. Um, yeah, so that was a lot of fun to work on. Yeah, I love those characters so much, Dana. So. <laughs> Thank you. Um, possum endearing, right? <laughs> An endearing yeah. possum. <laughs> so possum is kind of based on my husband and then I'm I'm kind of rabbit but you know by the time by the time I kind of developed the story and the characters for the book it, it they've they kind of became their own they evolved and then yeah and then you can see moose in there too mm -hmm. um, yeah hiding <laughs> <laughs> so you know working I know you've you guys have uh, worked with other um, illustrators on here also have a history in animation. Yes, that's and, right. Yeah, and it's really interesting because I think having that background in animation really helps you transition into publishing because it's kind of like, it's a very similar process. In some ways, it's actually like the bookmaking process is actually simpler. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's like kind of just taking the motion out. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. especially if you're working with like, in children's TV and then uh, it's, it's a 
it's a very similar similar way of working. Um, so for me, the challenge, the biggest obstacle when it came to kind of transitioning, aside from the writing, which was very new to me, um, was just kind of developing my own style and my own way of working uh, for making picture books. Like as an animator, I kind of had to be a little bit of a chameleon and take on all these other different styles and approaches depending on what the client asked for. So then when it came to, um, when I decided like that I wanted to try and make picture books, I needed to develop my own personal style and approach. So the way I did that was um, I started doing all these kind of drawing challenges and I would just draw all the time every day. And, and I came up with all these different characters and ideas over uh, a few years. And so on the top, the, the images on the top are from, are my Inktobers, mm -hmm. which um, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but the, there's like a drawing challenge that happens every October. And basically all it is, is you draw, you do one ink drawing a day. And this was a really great way for me to kind of uh, not only develop my own style, but come up with like a lot of different character oh, ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, then on the bottom, those are some examples of what I call dog diaries. And uh, basically, and I, I love dogs, I love all animals, but I, I love dogs and I, but I just don't really have like the time to take care of one, which is why I got rabbits instead. Um, <laughs> but I would see all these dogs in the city and then I would tell my, my husband about them. And he'd be like, well, you know, you should just draw them. Draw them, yeah. So, yeah, so I started doing that. And this was another way for me to just kind of, um, you know, develop different different techniques and drawing styles and approaches and, and really have a chance to just experiment and have fun with it. Um, you must be excited for your next book then. <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. <about. laughs> so my next book is called I Have Seven Dogs. It's written by Molly Haran and it's, it's all about a little girl who has um, a lot of dogs in her neighborhoods that that in her neighborhood that she thinks of her dog because she doesn't she's unable to have a dog of her own yes. uh so it's yeah it, uh, that was a lot of fun to work on yeah you obviously had the research already in your portfolio <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah uh and these are all examples of um like kind of more finished portfolio pieces that i developed and so this is what kind of uh my portfolio looked like when i would uh, go on meetings with art directors and editors and we would discuss the type of work I wanted to do and and you can see that the kind of common motifs of like kids and nature and animals are all in there um, and also just kind of like you know mm -hmm. having fun and with the the work and and having a sense of humor in there yeah I love them love them um, and, you know, I think that's important to kind of, if, if you're developing uh, a portfolio to kind of focus, whether it's working for in children's illustration or any other type of artwork or creative industry that you want to work in, I think it's important to um, focus on the stuff that really interests you. Like yes. you don't want, you don't want to have a portfolio full of cars if you hate drawing cars. Exactly. That's really <laughs> Point yeah, which I know point. a lot of us do. A lot of us, a lot of us are not fans of drawing any kind of vehicle. I'm not. I'm not good at it at all. Uh, but you know, like if if you if you are if you're interested in that, then you know it's great because then you know you can get all the work that no one else wants to do. Yeah. Um, I I actually I remember talking to a friend of mine who is a background artist, and I asked him like, why did you want to be a background artist in in animation? He said like. Well, you know, no one else wanted to do it. So I figured, oh, let me, let me become a really good background artist and I'll get all the work. Yes. Yeah, and backgrounds are also key in stories. You know, you want to yeah. put your characters in a scene. Is that a capybara? Is that how you, capybara? A uh, capybara, little... yes. Ah. I, I, I love capybaras. Um, yeah, so do I. They're just so, they're so funny and- So funny. Yeah, yeah. and they're just like, 
I don't know. I, I've seen like videos of them going into like so just sitting in hot springs and they look so relaxed and happy. And yeah, uh, I haven't put one into a book yet. I'm, I'm yes, I'm, I think you might have. I, <laughs> I should have a capybara book at some point. Yes, yeah. Uh, and this is kind of where I'm at now. These are some examples of uh, work that I've had in like published books over the years. Um, and so I'll go into kind of the way I work, uh, but I like to do sort of a hybrid style between um, traditional and digital. So, uh, and this is um, just for like finished published work. Um, when, you're, when you're working in a picture book, when you're doing a picture book, uh, you have to, it's important to keep everything very consistent. Um, so I like to have kind of a, a system of working that will make it easy for everything to to remain the same because you have to make sure all the characters look the same you have to keep all the same colors uh you can't have you know things looking wildly different from one page to the next uh so basically i the way i work is i typically do um all the the line art on pencil and paper and then I scan that into the computer and I add all the color digitally. And that kind of just allows me um, the ability to make changes a little bit easier instead of having to like re repaint everything or redraw everything. I can kind of just uh, move stuff around or delete pieces here and there if I need to. Um, because you know, there, once you have the final art done, you, st you can still sometimes have to go back and make changes. Um, but you know, with each, each book I work on, I like to try and do something a little bit different or experiment with a different way of working or a different approach, um, whether it's kind of using a completely new color palette or um, maybe incorporating new techniques. Like in Tea Time, I started to kind of add some collage work in the background there um, and, and utilizing like watercolor textures and stuff like that, so. Yeah, did you learn that um, also a little bit when you were at um, college? Because I know you did a fine arts degree. You did some animation there, or was this mostly, you know, develop this skill set when you were doing animation? Just as a quick question while we're on this topic. Yeah, no, I mean, I think, you know, my degree, it was mostly focused on just kind of like a general fine art background. Mm -hmm. So I took a little bit of everything. So it's like drawing and then I took a, an oil painting class and nice to do all of that. Yeah. 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 So that was, it was great to have that background because, mm -hmm. um, you know, it kind of gave me the ability to have like a strong foundation in drawing. And then from yes. there, I could kind of go in a lot of different directions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then, yeah, here's some more. Uh, I, my personal favorite is the one of them, the pearl drawing with peanut watching. And then uh, the one in the upper right hand corner there of them pretending to be superheroes together. And uh, so this is Dolly. And oh, this, cool. is, <laughs> this is the doll that inspired the story and um, it's funny because, you know, I've had her for so long and, you know, I, I look at her and I, at a certain, in a certain way. And um, I remember the first time I showed her to my husband and he was absolutely terrified of her. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dolls can have that effect sometimes. Yeah. And I, it's like, oh, I guess I kind of see it, you know, with her like big black eyes and stuff, but like, I just see her and I just see, you know, uh, and I just see Dolly. Um, but you can see how, how beat up she's gotten over the years. Actually, when uh, the, uh, her head is like a solid plastic, so that was like the only thing that the doll company didn't do anything with. Um, but you can see that I think her hair originally used to be curly, and but I would carry her around by the hair. So all the curls kind of just got pulled out. And you can also see that she's missing a line of of hair in the front there front, and that's yeah. because I remember trying to give her bangs as a as a kid <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah cutting the, the doll's yeah. hair 
and the, and it didn't it didn't quite work the way I had thought it would. I, you know, they didn't lay flat like I had wanted them to. So then I just I was just like, oh well, let me just cut off <laughs> all the hair completely. Um, <laughs> Your first foray into being a hairstylist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, which is probably why I'm not in that line right now. <laughs> it's probably a good thing. Um, and you can see, I think she had like she did have a mouth at some point. The mouth got. I was wondering. Out. Yeah. Okay. It yeah, you off. can kind of see. I think there's like a very faint line of like yes, kind of very yes. small U shape. A little smile. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so that that's that's the doll that inspired it all. Yeah, she's very um, unique as well. She's not like part of some collection that maybe I'd be familiar with. But then I'm from right. England. Yeah, and... like I don't know, I don't know, like wh like what company made her or where she came from. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, but she's quite uh, cool because she's soft as a rag doll in the body, so easy to drag around like that. Yeah. Then, but then her face looked a bit more sort of real, like dolls were you know it's like made out of plastic and had more well she's got a cute little you know dotty eyes which I kind of find unique as well <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and no, like, I kind of draw all my characters with those like dark like black dot eyes too yeah yeah, yeah 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 yes that, there you go yes <laughs> so we just heard from Valentina in the chat that she has um her favorite stuffed animal is a hippo and his name is Crumb. So thanks for sharing that, Valentina. Oh. I hope you draw him. <laughs> yeah. I, I also had a rhino that I really liked and it oh, was, um, yes. I think like they called them puffalumps, I think. If oh. anyone, I think they were, they were big when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. um, I also had a rabbit. Uh, yes. Yeah. They're good to drag around by the ears. <laughs> mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, she had like the long floppy ears too, like they mm -hmm. came down. Um, yeah, I had bears. I had a lot of bears. Oh yeah, yeah. that's a classic one. Mm -hmm. um, so, peanut. These are some early sketches of peanut, but actually, this was uh, kind of done before I had. This was probably like 2015 or so, um, and I actually um, didn't have any sort of idea that I was gonna. Uh, draw, uh, work on Peanut gets cut up at this point. And uh, mm -hmm. I was just kind of sketching these characters for fun. And <laughs> this was um, back when I kind of imagined Peanut as an actual penguin uh, mm -hmm. wandering through New York City as a tourist. That's a cool story. <laughs> and <laughs> and I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can hear, but that's actually my rabbit Peanut. Um, Jocelyn, um, as far as yeah. and he's getting a little antsy right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, so this was, I just had this like funny idea that I thought of like this penguin, what if his little penguin was wandering around New York City, uh, riding the subway and eating dim sum in Chinatown. Yeah, eating the dim sum. I wanted to say how charming that is. I love that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so then, um, you know, again, I come, sometimes I just come up with these characters and these ideas and they just kind of let, they just kind of sit in my sketchbook for a while. Um, and then a few years ago when I was developing this story idea and I came up with the whole idea of like, what if the stuffed animal had thoughts and feelings and wanted to run away from its owner? Then I thought, well, instead of making it a doll, what if I, what if I make it a penguin and use this penguin sketch that I did like years before? And so that's what I ended up doing. And these are some of the uh, just character sketches and rough studies that I did um, for in, before, uh, while I was working on the book, basically. Um, and so, yeah, I just thought it was, you know, sometimes you, you work on something years before and you don't really, doesn't really have a certain purpose, but then you can end up using it years later. So you never know like, when, when things are, how things are gonna come together in the end. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Important to have a sketchbook, keep your ideas. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, you know, and even if, you know, you can draw something that just seems just frivolous and pointless, but there's never any, you know, there's always um, a purpose to, to working out ideas in your sketchbook, even if, you know, they don't seem apparent at the time. And um, so these are some of the early sketches of Peanut. Now, when you're working on a picture book, 
you don't just kind of do everything all at once and send it off to the publisher and then it gets printed. There's a lot of back and forth that you have to do um, that, you know, if, if even if you kind of have a, a solid idea of what you want the book to be and what you want it to say, you have to still work out all these different um, plot points throughout and, and, and the writing and a lot of stuff gets changed over over time as, as you work with your editor. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is an example of like one of the earlier uh, sketches where, you know, you, you can still see that Peanut is getting the ice cream, but then um, the text changed. So uh, I had, I ended up having to cut the scene where he's riding, where they're riding in the subway and they're on the uh, roller coaster, which was a little bit sad, but um, uh, I know, but it took him too far away, maybe, from being found. <laughs> right, yeah. And then also, you, you can see that Pina is um, a little more, uh, like, acting kind of like a real penguin in these spreads. Like, mm -hmm. like they're reaching for the ice cream, and they have their, their little hands up in the air on the roller coaster. And then my, so my editor said, well, what if, um, what if Peanut was kind of just like, a, like an actual stuffed animal, and you didn't really see it move at all? Mm -hmm. I thought that was a, a funny suggestion and you kind of like leave it up to the reader's imagination of how they get around from point A to point B. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and then this is another early spread that ended up getting changed. And you can see like the basic idea of kind of peanut approaching the swing set once, he, once they realize how much they miss Pearl. Uh, that kind of remained the same, but then the images on the right had to get cut once we um, decided to change the text and the ending a little bit. Um, but then you can see that a lot of those images are actually similar to the ones that we ended up using in the end papers. Uh, so that was like just a nice thing where sometimes, you know, you come up with these ideas and, and they can be used. And yeah. Kinda, yeah, take them if they if you end up not using them in one part of the book, you might be able to salvage them and use them in a different part. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so before I go on through the cover, I thought I'd just kind of show what the process of like how I actually make the final art for the book. Um, so this is what I use when I when I'm working digitally. It's a program called Photoshop. And you know, it's something that I think a lot of artists use when they're working digitally or you know, procreate on the iPad now. Um, so this is a, uh, the rough sketch that I start with. So um, you can see all the characters are in different layers and that's just so I can kind of move stuff around easily if I and want. That, and that, um, Dana, you drew it and then scanned it in. Right. No, this is actually when I'm when I'm just doing the sketches. The drawing uh, I will work all digitally. Okay, got it. Yeah, it's actually it's it's faster for me to be able to work digitally gotcha. uh, in the sketch phase, and and then just kind of so you know I'm just kind of planning everything out and putting everything where it needs to go. That's it. Yeah. Um, and this is you know still you know in the sketch phase, a lot of things can still change at this point, so you want to be able to keep mm -hmm. things. Um, kind of loose and, and not put too much time or effort into them because a lot of things will end up changing inevitably. Uh, right. And you just want enough information to kind of make it so it, it, it's obvious what's what's happening mm -hmm. in each shot. And then, um, so what I do then, once, once the sketch is approved, then I actually print this out and I use uh, something that's called a light box. And that's so I can uh, lightly trace over all the artwork onto, onto nice like uh, art paper. And then I do the pencil line, the pencil work. And this is what the final pencil art looks like once it's scanned into the computer. Um, so it's just kind of like a cleaner, nicer version of what the sketch is, uh, but then you have to add the color to it. So this is what the color looks like. So mm -hmm. what I do is basically similar to the sketching part of the part of the phase. I have all the colors on different layers. So it's the grass and shadows. 
And then you have um, like the background characters. And there's, you can see there's a lot of different layers here. Yeah. And this makes it really easy if like, you know, my, my art director editor comes back and says like, can we just move peanut over a little bit? You can just grab those layers. Mm -hmm. and, kind of shift yeah. over. and it's a lot easier than, you know, yeah. having yeah. to like repaint mm -hmm. maybe, like the whole section or, or whatever. Yeah. And that way you can kind of save, you know, if you really like the way something looks, it, you don't have to redo it. You can just, you can just yeah. move it around. Um, and that's, that's basically it. That's yeah, that was fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing your presentation with us. Um, so yeah, excellent. Are you ready to draw everybody? <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, should we just start drawing? Yeah, um, take it away. So everybody, I hope you got your art materials ready and we'll watch Dana live drawing for us. Okay, and so questions, by the way, uh, you can put them in the chat and I will ask Dana the questions. Okay, so for my workshop, I'm going to use this rabbit mm -hmm. as my sort of starting point. Um, so you can obviously use whatever stuffed animal you have, um, whether it's an animal or a doll or whatever. And, um, you know, I think with uh, with coming up with different characters, you can take a lot of creative liberties. Like the character doesn't have to look exactly like your stuffed animal. Um, you know, I think uh, when it comes to how I draw, especially when it comes to drawing animals and, and drawing animals that can kind of like move around like people do, um, you kind of have to figure out ways to draw them in a way that allows for that. Um, so basically, I'm going to push this. Basically, I start with the head. And these are the two little eyes. And then we have the, gotta get those long rabbit ears in. Um, so yeah, so we start with the head. And then uh, for the body, I figured, uh, so for this this whole drawing, I figured let's, we can do maybe like a, like rabbit is having a dance party with all of their friends. Um, so we wanna draw her in motion. Um, and rabbits kind of have these, you know, when rabbits do a thing called telescoping, it's kind of like when they get up on their hind legs and they put their arms up and they stand all the way up and they get really tall. Uh, so they actually have a pretty long body. And what I basically do is draw kind of like one long wiggly shape for them. And then they have these, they have really big feet. And if you know rabbits and they are, um, they're really good at hopping and my rabbits can actually hop like really high if they want to when they're not being lazy. Uh, so that's why they have these these big feet to do that. I love how already just with the simplest lines, your little rabbit has personality already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing like with, with drawing these characters, I think you can keep it, you can keep things really simple. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need a lot of detail and you know for things to still kind of read as uh, what you're trying to draw. Mm -hmm. Then rabbits have kind of like these little 
print pause. Does anybody who's participating this morning have uh, any rabbits? If you do, let us know. Or let us know if you have any pets or if you definitely have a cute stuffed animal, um, we'd love to know what, I know Valentina mentioned she has a hippo. Uh, how about anybody else? Let us know. Love to hear from you. I know you're probably busy drawing now. <laughs> we, we lost um, the yes. camera on the phone. Oh, there we go. Thanks. Okay. Um, oh. I'm going to draw her with a tambourine. So Valentina has a bunny in the backyard, which actually Lindsay, who's behind the scenes at Society of Illustrators, she also was watching rabbits in her garden. She has a rabbit that's been coming up to her deck to have some food. <laughs> Um, um, now my rabbit is not wearing any clothing, but I'm going to put her in a t-shirt because I just, I like putting characters in clothes. I think it just adds, because like she's all white, so I just want to add like a nice pop of color. So for those um, who are drawing with regular tools, you know, like pencils and maybe having a go with um, ink pens or possibly even dipping ink pens, which is another um, nice way to do an outline, particularly if you're doing animation. Did you uh, come across in your like, you know, various experiments with these types of materials some favorites that you recommend for doing outlines, because you want something that's permanent and um, reads well, dark, and maybe if you're gonna color, perhaps with something that might be watercolor, you might have pencils that you can add um, water to that also, you know, like watercolor pencils, you would not wanna move the um, black outline that you've drawn. So if you have any little tips and recommendations for art materials that you like, that's always fun to share. Yeah, so right now I'm using uh, Prismacolor color mm -hmm. pencils, and uh, these you can you can find them in any art uh, store. Uh, yeah, and um, you know I haven't used watercolor pencils, mm -hmm. so I, I I'd like to try them. Um, you know I haven't exper I need to experiment more with some traditional media because uh, you know I usually color digitally, so. Right, right. That's that's correct. You, you, you mentioned that's how you're doing your picture books. Um, and I guess that's how you did the animation as well was digital. So <laughs> yeah, so I like to, you know, I, when I do stuff like this, I just I like to, you know, play around with colored pencils and watercolors. Uh, mm -hmm. But I haven't, you know, really, I would love to do a, a full book all traditionally one day, but, you know, mm -hmm. I've, that would be nice, wouldn't it? Like a yeah. different challenge, yeah. I have there's some illustrators that I love who work traditionally, and mm -hmm. uh, it just it scares me. <laughs> well, speaking of that, who inspires you? Yeah, I was going to ask you a few questions about, you know, maybe not just um, illustrators, but maybe actual picture books that you grew up with, or any animation that you even saw that inspired you. Oh yeah, so um, I think you know, growing up, I, I read a lot of the classic picture books, like uh, mm -hmm. you know, um, polar fairy tales. tales. Sorry, mm -hmm. uh, like Murray Sendak, you know, and and yes. Polar Express, yeah. and and all those kind of books. And yes. there is like another one. I remember the uh, Millions of Cats. I think it was, it's a oh, really yes. old one. Yeah, uh, that's a fantastic one. Yeah, <laughs> Millions of Cats. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, I, yeah, I remember all those books. I think Maurice Sendak was a big 
obviously a big influence on me as a kid. And then also um, the Winnie the Pooh books I loved, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, especially the illustrations, like the the way that uh, characters were drawn. It's, a, it's just, I just mm -hmm. love that. And, and, you know, the Beatrix Potter too. Yeah, I see a bit of you in both of those styles. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that kind of just classic, mm -hmm. um, those classic illustration styles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, and mo more recently, like, you know, and I was also like a big um, Disney kid growing up. So I, I yeah. watched all the Disney movies and I loved that. And I would always say, you know, I'm going to grow up and be a Disney animator. <laughs> and I, I realized I didn't really want to move all the way to California. Oh, right. Yeah, that's where most of the Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, but yes, the Disney movies, wow, well, some of them, particularly speaking of backgrounds, I mean, you really you focus in on the characters, the main characters, which are the animated moving, you know, story. Uh, you know, that's, part, that's the main part of the story. But then in the background, you see some really amazing detailed, you know, castles, woods, amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, once, you know, as an adult now, I've grown to really appreciate a lot of the background art that goes into mm -hmm. them, especially the more, the the kind of like the older classics, like, you know, 101 mm -hmm. Donations and yeah. stuff like that, where they have kind of more stylized yes. backgrounds. And such fun characters in um, stories like Sleeping Beauty that were, you know, translated into Disney animation, really wonderful characters in that. Um, so white jungle book oh yeah <laughs> so how are you all doing i would love for you guys to share some artwork so don't uh, be shy if you've drawn um your favorite character that might be a stuffed animal it might be another toy that you have um do share we'd love to see those drawings that you do and also if you are drawing a pet, that's also another idea. I have a mini Datsun, as some of the participants might already know. And I noticed, Dana, that you had drawn three little Datsuns in one of your um, portfolio pieces. Oh, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> I always wondered if I should have more than one, because I only have one right now. But they are very cute in a group. <laughs> Yeah, there's actually one in uh, in the book I'm working on as well. So. Oh, good, good, good. I, yeah. did, yeah. uh, I, I worked at a studio where the one of the some one of the employees had a little dachshund that that would come in and, oh. and kind of like scurry around the studio and. That's so cute. Yeah, I love I love a lot of people will have like studio dogs at some of these yeah. studios I work in, and it's always nice. Yeah, you have studio rabbits. I don't know if we can get yes. a glimpse of them, but <laughs> they're very cute. Uh, yeah, and uh, interesting to see the first two rabbits that you had, how different they are. You know, I have seen Lopid, um, you know, the, I think that's what that breed is, when the ears are flopped down. Are they called Lopid? Or is that when it's one up and one down? Uh, yes, that's, that's, a, that's a lop eared rabbit. Yeah. But the little one um, with the little lion's mane, that's such an unusual rabbit, it's so cute. <laughs> uh, yeah, she, lion heads are, are kind of known for being um, very sassy ah. uh, and a little bit a little bit bratty. So she, she liked ah. everything to be a certain way and, and she would get like annoyed if you um, like close the door to the, to the office. Even if she didn't want to leave the room, she just liked the door <laughs> open. So she would get very particular oh. about a lot of things. Yeah, I can see how that she inspired the personality for, um, you know, was it, what, what, what was the two characters' names that were in the book, the two little rabbits, in Tea Time? Oh, that was Woodstock, yeah. Woodstock, I wanted to say Woodstock, yeah, because actually Woodstock from Snoopy had that sort of little hair sticking up, little bird. <laughs> yeah, that's why I named her, I love, I, I love the peanut characters as well, so. Yeah. Um, uh, that's why I named her Woodstock, because I thought she kind of looked yeah. like it. She looked like, yes, exactly. So I'm just going to add a, a cat here. So also, you know, the more you draw um, 
the more you get used to just drawing without even reference. It's like Dana obviously has drawn lots of animals over the years, so she can just start to draw a little cat without even having something in front of her to, to look at as reference. And I'm sure some of you draw very regularly, as I know quite a lot of you do. Um, you'll be able to draw as well just from practice. And, you know, with cats, they have those certain features that make them very recognizable with their little triangle ears. Um, but it's interesting that dogs are more um, unique. You've got so many different breeds. That is, you know, <laughs> uh, that, that, you know, you're drawing seven in your new book, but there are, I don't even know how many breeds there are, but there have got to be more than 30. And uh, so. Yeah, dogs are, you know, it's, it's pretty uh, amazing how many different types of yeah, and, that, and now we've got cross, they all look for cross breeds and mutts and <laughs> yes, yeah, and actually a lot of cats too, a lot of different types of cats. Um, yes, it's, oh, I forgot I forgot his tail. I was going to ask you. Um, I I have definitely um, been aware of Inktober, and that's a really fun idea um, for participants to try to do a little drawing every day, even if it's a small doodle type drawing, that sort of like can get you practiced at thinking of different ideas. And I, I was wondering with Ink Inktober, do you get a prompt each time, each day? Is there a prompt or can you draw anything that you, you want to draw for that month? Uh, you know, I've seen certain like social media accounts that will post, you know, like different words for, the, for every day of the month. And then you can right. use that. Like if you think like, oh, how am I going to come up with 31 different ideas? Well, you can use um, those prompts as a kind of guide. Yes, yes. Uh, that will help kind of inspire it. So, you know, they'll, they'll be like, like just one word. And, um, or you can just come up with your own. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's why I really like the idea of doing something like Inktober because it was very open and you could do mm -hmm. kind of whatever you wanted and you can put as much or as little effort into it. Yes, yes, yes. Because one day you might have a bit more time and another day you're just gonna do a little quick line drawing. Yeah, and then uh, it was nice to, you know, share it online and, and you know, with other people and to see what other people are, are doing with yes. their Inktobers and, it, it, you know, it just was a nice, and there's a lot of other um, drawing exercises that have kind of popped up in, uh you know and after inktober kind of became a big hit yeah. um so yeah there's all sorts of stuff that you can participate in online or you you know you can just make up your own too yeah that's right uh, find a green sweater i think so also, um, when you're coming up with um, characters for the books, uh, you start off really with that main character, would you say? Like, even if you're um, working with the editor, she, she might have seen, or she or he might have seen the um, penguin character in your sketchbook or in your portfolio. And from there, you have to sort of develop other characters that go along with the story. So there was the squirrel, um, that Peanut is sitting next to on the bench, um, you know, things like that. that. It's like it's up to you to, to think of these other characters. And to your point from earlier, it's always nice to draw things that you already enjoy drawing. So I know that one of our participants had a stuffed hippo. So I'm excited to see what, how she's drawn her hippo. And um, she's going to be sending that in, she said. So thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> and, you know, like, obviously, when I draw these animals, they don't look exactly like, you know, this doesn't look like a real cat. Um, so you can take a lot of a lot of liberties when you're yeah, make it your own, your own style. Yeah. yeah really gives it personality. Did you have some favorite animals when you were a child? 
Oh, you know, it's funny because I always, growing up, I always wanted a cat. Mm -hmm. um, but my, my brother was allergic to them. And then, and now that I have rabbits, it's, it's like, I can, I couldn't imagine having anything else. Um, <laughs> yeah, you're definitely a rabbit family. <laughs> But I did, I did have a dog. Uh, we had a family dog when I was younger named Casey and he was, uh, so he's, he's kind of the dog um, based on the dog that was in Peanut Gets Fed, the one who um, oh, okay. tears Peanut's poor little flipper. Uh, yeah. I, I did actually, it's funny, I just did a, a school reading where I read, a school visit where I read Peanut Mm -hmm. And um, one of the students was uh, very upset that the dog was not properly disciplined in the book. He was, oh, oh, really? like, the dog, he did something really bad and he got <laughs> in trouble for it. And I'm like, oh yeah, I know the dog was bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's always interesting to see how the audience can uh, participate in the story. Yes. Uh, have our own point of view. Um, I actually, you know, if we have time, it'd be lovely to see um, that first book that you wrote, you know, the rabbit and possum book, because there in that story, there are two quite different animal characters that, you know, not normally would they be friends. So possums are known to be a bit sort of, um, would they be mean? I don't know if that's fair to say, but they're a bit more, uh, uh, you know, I don't even want to say the word vicious, but they're rodents and they're sort of, they've got sharp teeth as far as I recall and um probably a rabbit in normal life might be a bit more afraid of a possum i don't know but um yeah maybe it's like, yeah maybe uh, but here, it's here like working on that book i just kind of started like you know uh i didn't know much about possums and then i started reading all these facts about them and ah, they're yeah. actually a very misunderstood oh okay good. Do share, do share. Um, <laughs> because like they they First of all, they, they eat a lot of pests that are unwanted. Hmm. Um, so they're actually good to have around. And um, yeah. a lot of people think that they have, that they're like, if they see a possum and it's acting, you know, aggressive and they think that it might be rabid. But um, from what I've read, I, I'm, you know, I'm not, not a possum expert here, but from what I've read, I think it's hard for possums to actually get rabies. Um, oh. So I think that's kind of a that's another mis misnomer. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I was, I was going to say that perhaps you could um, share how you came up with Possum's, you know, cute little personality. Because I think I can personally, and I think maybe our participants can sort of understand that rabbits could be quite easily drawn as cute, friendly animals. Um, mm -hmm. But it, that that one would be more of a, an interesting challenge. It's also <laughs> like trying to make perhaps a rat having a cute personality. That could be also a challenge. And some of you have seen or heard of the film Ratatouille. And of course, you know, all the characters there have completely different personalities. And, you know, that um, creator of that show had to really think about you know, the rodent population and how they might depict them with all their different personality traits and different looks, just like people. Um, so yeah, actually when you're creating your animals, you have to think about their personality. So same with your drawings that you're doing this morning, you can add your own little twist, maybe what they're wearing, maybe you want to add a little scene behind them. Um, and also doing a story that might have two um, expected main characters that's always quite fun as well so. yeah so when I was uh designing possum I think you know that's an example of how like possum doesn't really look like a real possum but you kind of have the long snout and the yeah. nose and and yeah. kind of like you, you want to have like just just the kind of defining features mm -hmm. of what yeah. a possum yeah. looks like, but you can take a lot of, you know, there's a lot of creative freedom mm -hmm. that you can have when you're designing these characters to make them look maybe a little bit cuter than they are in real life. Yes, exactly. Oh, and here's a, a question that came to mind. Um, when you got the manuscript for Tea Time, were the characters very um, clearly defined in that story or did you have um, more freedom to decide 
what type of animals the characters would be? Yes, yeah, so actually, uh, there was no specific um, guidelines for those characters. So that so at first I was thinking, you know, I just kind of um, was thinking that they would be human because you know that was the first thing that came to mind. But then I thought, well, why not make these characters animals instead? Because the whole the whole book is um, it has this kind of like a an overall silliness to it. Like there's like a not not silly, but um, there's a lightness and a and, and a sense of fun to the book. And I thought mm -hmm. that animal characters would be more appropriate for it. Yeah. And I actually yeah. thought of using hippos because I thought of the kind of the juxtaposition of using these 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 big animals playing um, like big DT cubs and playing with yes. these little golf clubs uh, would be would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. I think you had that in uh, one of the the sketches, right? When in your presentation, I think they were hippos. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So uh, that's, that's very interesting, isn't it? So um, working alongside your editor and your art director, they looked at your sketches and your ideas and they liked that. And how would they, would they share that with the writer, the author, or would, um, would the author not really have too much input on that? They just let you go with it and then the author would be having a nice surprise as to how you had illustrated it and, and actually brought more to the whole book with your illustration ideas. So that's really the um, marriage between an author and an illustrator is after the author's written the book, the story, the illustrator will get the manuscript and read it and then interpret it and give it another sort of layer to it, enrich it. And that, that's, um, that's pretty exciting for actually an author has, who hasn't specifically given you guidelines as to what type of character you're gonna draw. So that author was happy with the result, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, actually, it's funny because um, I had the chance to meet Beth Ferry, who was the mm -hmm. author. Yes. Uh, because she actually grew up in, she's, she's from New Jersey. She lives there now. That's mm -hmm. where, and she's about 20 minutes from where I grew up. Oh, um, wow. So we were able to have, this was um, over the summer. So we were able to do like an in-person launch party nice oh that's so and good. uh we had it at a golf course um and it was it was a lot of fun and oh, she actually God. told me that um hippos were her favorite animal uh, so and i didn't know that wow uh, but i started when i worked on the book so that was like a really fun coincidence yes wow So I'm, I'm just drawing a, a ballerina elephant right now. Yeah, that's right. You know, speaking, that's... Of, speaking of large animals. Yes. And I know it's not, uh, uh, elephants are, are usually much larger than, than rabbits and cats, but I'm taking some, this, this could be like yeah. a baby elephant, I guess. They're like baby animals there. Yeah. <laughs> and actually elephants are more graceful than you think because, you know, they're big animals, but they actually walk very, um, stealthily and I've watched them actually because I got the chance to go to India and I was watching um, and this is really amazing but I watched an elephant polo match and they move very gracefully actually it's mm -hmm. very beautiful to watch so actually it sort of translates in my mind that an elephant might have the desire to be doing ballet <laughs> even though that seems really unusual and unlikely being such a big animal and, uh, I don't know if this is a, a a real thing or not, but I've heard that football players sometimes take dance classes. Oh, yeah, helps them there. Is it football or is it soccer? You, you mean like? I don't know. Could, maybe both. I don't know. Maybe both. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Why not? I'm gonna add a little disco ball up top. to draw a circle freehand yeah that takes practice as well but <laughs> also that adds to the charm <laughs> do you do your own lettering as well um i have yeah um so like if you look at the cover of peanut and rabbit and possum um those i i did 
the lettering for. Um, yeah. And do you have any tips for sort of developing that and whether um, writing in capital letters or in lowercase is preferable when you're doing animation and putting those words into bubbles, speech bubbles or thought bubbles? Uh, you know, it's funny because I actually have uh, really terrible handwriting in real life. Oh, doesn't look uh, like it. <laughs> so when I, like when I'm just like writing out something very quickly, it, it, it my handwriting is very messy. Uh, so it takes a lot of concentration to actually, um, you know, make it look nice. But, yeah. uh, so again, I mean, like anything else, I would say that it's just a matter of, of practicing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the kind of, a lot of the hand lettering that I, I do ends up kind of looking basically just like a, a neater version of um, what my own natural. Your natural handwriting. Would be. Handwriting looks mm -hmm. like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't really consider myself like, a, oh, there goes peanut again. Uh, <laughs> hear that. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really consider myself like a lettering artist. Um, yeah. Yes. I, I do. I love, I love artists who can, who can do that really well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or to do like calligraphy and all that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah. yeah. So I think everyone's busily drawing away. Um, let me see. I think this is. Back when you were presenting, um, Josh said amazing. Um, thank you, Josh, for anyone making those comments to say how wonderful this is. Thank you so much. We always learn so much from illustrators. And this morning, you're really getting a good idea of how to draw characters by hand, because actually Dana does quite a bit digitally. So it's really nice and um, sort of more approachable for us with our um, little drawing materials like pencils and coloring pens or coloring pencils. Yeah, I love I love to just um, draw on paper because so much of my work, whether it's you know whether it's when it's I'm working on a book or if I'm animating, I am mm -hmm. usually staring at screens all day. Um, yes, it's good. It's to really know. nice to be able to mm -hmm. work on paper. Do you have anything brewing in the back of your mind for another book you're going to write and illustrate? Um, I'm not, I have a few uh, dummies, which are basically for those of you who don't know, a dummy is a um, just like a, a picture book that is fully sketched out, but you're, you don't have the final art done. It's like what I showed you earlier with the black and white sketches. Um, it's just kind of that with all the text in place. Um, yeah. So I have a few of those that I've I've done and um, just kind of been sitting on them, waiting to revise. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One of them. One of them. I'm um, excited about, and it's um, it's got animal and people characters too. So. Okay, good. Yeah, you don't need to give us the full <laughs> disclosure yeah, yet. I mean, yeah, we haven't, we haven't, you know, tried to sell it yet or anything. So we might, yeah. we might never see it, but hopefully someday. Yay. Well, um, I think you have a, um, a, a natural ability to do both, which is really great. To, you know, I think when you're an illustrator, to be able to write your story as well is, is a treat because then you have, you know, full control over every single part of your book. It's, it's as you said, it's like an animation or like a mini film. So that's, that's really fun. But then it's also nice to work in collaboration because then you get to read something that you haven't even thought of. Um, yeah. Um, and some of these books are not necessarily books that I would have ever written. So it's, it's really right, nice. Right, like, quite like the Remember Balloons was such a beautiful story, but you know, yeah. I, it's, it's, it's not really the type of book that I would ever right sometimes well as they say you know when you're um, getting your tips for writing stories you usually it's suggested that you write about what you know like or, or you know something that maybe an experience or you could write about somebody in your family or something you're passionate about or something that amuses you or if you've got 
a fantasy um, story idea that's going to come straight from your own imagination. So yeah, so you know, obviously um, the author Jessie, you know, she must have had that whole experience um, to have that amazing story in her mind. Yeah, her grandfather seemed like uh, a really amazing person, and and that's inspired the story. Inspired yeah. Her to write it. Yeah. And then um, my art director on that was actually uh, Lucy Ruth Cummins, who is um, also a very amazing author and illustrator. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was really grateful for her that she kind of saw that and, and, and thought of me. Yes, so yes. Great. And um, you, yes, perfect for it. Yeah. Because that wasn't necessarily a book that I would have um, thought, oh, yeah, I can do this. Mm -hmm. But she mm -hmm. kind of trusted that yeah that I would do a good job with it and and so yeah I'm, I'm really grateful yeah that's that's true it's like diversified beyond you know, the type of books that you'll actually be offered as well mm -hmm. and how is it working on chapter books because let's talk a little bit about that because I know quite a lot of our participants are in you know the, the chapter book reading realm and maybe beyond but um you know like say for example with these series um as you all know kids chapter books can often have some really special little um, spot illustrations or full, you know, page. This is a full page here, but then there's also little um, spots as well. Like here, you'll just see a little drawing that's um, three quarters of a page. But I really find that when I was a child, I really liked those kinds of books because I like to have an idea along the, with all the words have a view of the characters, even though you might have some ideas in your own mind. I, I remember I was a big fan of Roald Dahl and reading all his books. There was always, you know, the wonderful drawings in his series of books by Quentin Blake that I really enjoyed. You know, the little sketchy ink drawings that he did for all the characters. So, oh, these look wonderful. Oh, so cute. Wow. So that's just using Prisma um, coloring pencils, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and actually um, I do like those pencils as well because they're quite soft, um, but you can do a light touch with them or you can press really hard and get some real coverage. Yeah, that's kind of what I've been, yeah. So you can kind mm -hmm. of get darker in areas like that and then, and yeah. then lighter and it kind of has different effects. And I also wanted to sort of mention to, kids who are watching, um, once you've sort of outlined your drawing, don't be afraid to then go over a little bit more strongly with your pencil so that you can really see the outline. Because um, that gives, you know, for this, we can really see now what Dana's drawing because she's not shy about drawing the line quite hard. But to begin with, you might want to just sketch softly. So if you need to do any erasing, you don't end up with that line that you can hardly rub out. <laughs> Some extra cute little characters coming in here. <laughs> See how the scene is building. It's a party scene, everybody. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear Peanut getting very antsy in the background. Oh, so does um, are you going to let them out after your workshop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because he just wants to come out and then he'll sleep in a box for the rest of the day. Oh, right. But because rabbits, so rabbits um, think of the word is uh, they're crepuscular, which means that they are active during dawn and dusk. And then they um, basically rest during, during the day. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, the ra rabbits are kind of good for working from home because they're not very demanding during the day. Yeah, know. yeah, they're having a nap. <laughs> but, uh, but they're not completely nocturnal then, that they do sleep again in the night? Or uh, they... A little bit, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I'd imagine they'd have to hide quite a bit because you've got all of those um, predators out at night. If they're wild rabbits, you've got hawks and owls and <laughs> such prowling around. But yeah, because, because rabbits are... Um you know, naturally they're prey animals. So uh, they like to kind of sit in a 
in a something where they feel protected. So I have these little, just like a cardboard box that I made a home for them. In, oh, and cute. they just like to lay in that all day. And, oh um, yeah, fancy. yeah. Like it's a little burrow. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, this has been a real pleasure to have you, Dana, this morning. <laughs> and so, so enjoyed your presentation as well. There was a lot there. I'm sure um, people can go back and look at um, the YouTube when it comes up in another week um, or so. We'll definitely have it up soon this month. And um, you can go back and look again because there's always these little details that when you're trying to draw yourselves during the workshop live, um, that, you know, it's fun to revisit it as well because you get a lot of more information when you go back in and have a look again. I'm certainly enjoying this very much. I really do love your work. It's really very, very beautiful and humor and endearing. Have you had stuffed animals made of your um, characters? I was going to ask. No, um, I would love that. I would love that. It's uh, one of Yeah, I think you should. <laughs> I've had a, I know some, I have some artist friends who have had uh, stuffed animals made. Yeah, themselves. yeah. Um, but yeah, they, they, they always look like so much fun. Yes, and I think yours would be so endearing, lend themselves immediately to being a stuffed animal for sure. I do have, I can show, this is, um, so Susan Tan mm -hmm. made this unicorn oh. for and oh, she crocheted it. Wow. Yeah, this is like the unicorn from from the cover. Of the yes. Book. yes, 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 uh, yes. Okay. I love, I love its big, its big snout here. Yeah, there it is. Happy horn. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, this, oh, is, this is the closest well, thing I have to a. Uh, yes, to a stuffed animal stuff. of my own. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll come. I'm sure. Of course, we've had to have the pandemic in the middle of books coming out so things are slowly getting back to a normal mm -hmm. yeah I mean I'm 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 excited to hear that uh the that that these seminars will be or workshops will be uh in person again in person again yeah you'll be doing yeah. I'm sure some visits with um peanut right you'll be hopefully doing some book signings in local bookstores maybe school visits. yeah I've done yeah I've done some virtual events and uh, you know I'm hoping I can do some in-person events as well uh, but yes, the, virtuals, the virtual events are, are nice because then you can kind of do them with, uh, like I was able to do a school visit in Rhode Island. and Yes, you can visit further afield. Mm -hmm. We can reach more people this way, which I enjoy as well. Yeah. But um, I was just going to say to the audience, you know, do, if you're in the area, which a lot of you who are familiar with the Society of Illustrators, um, Dana is also local, she's in Queens, so she may well be doing something in the boroughs or in the area. So check her website for her news of updates of what she's doing or her Instagram and follow her. And yeah. then you can I, meet her. <laughs> and yeah, I don't, I, yeah, my, my website is not really, I don't keep that as up to date, but uh, definitely on Instagram or- on Instagram, yeah, that's, that's actually easier to see as well. Mm -hmm. um, but thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, we've really enjoyed it. Participants have been busy working away and I will definitely be sending you some of the artwork that I know is gonna be coming in. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm excited to see it. <laughs> everybody enjoy your weekend. I hope you have a lovely weekend, whatever you're celebrating or if you're just relaxing, but have a great time and a great week ahead. And I will see some of you for after school workshops. Um, and then also we'll be having another Saturday Stories in May. And I really, really would love to have Dana come in person to the Society of Illustrators in the future, maybe for 2023 with a new book and she can do a workshop in person. That would be a real thrill. Yes. So thanks, Dana. You and Sean have a wonderful uh, weekend. Enjoy the bunnies. <laughs> Let them out. <laughs> And um, again, thank you. It's really a special morning with you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. And thank you everyone for watching. Take care.